Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about the top three programming languages every single programmer should learn, at least per my definition. So let's get into it. Now, you may be accustomed to the top five or the five programming languages everybody should learn. And honestly, I could only make it to, into three. I'm sorry, I, I know that you, were, you had your heart set on five, but I can only f really think of three that are kind of, sort of, must-haves, at least from my pers personal definition, at least for anybody who wants to be a modern-day programmer. So, what are the three? Let's get into it. In first place, drumroll, JavaScript. Why? Well, you see, JavaScript, regardless of how you feel about it, and I only say this because I am 100% sure that I'm going to have a few comments saying that JavaScript is bullshit, or a few personal messages that state something along the same lines, which means that now I have to explain why. Why in the world would I say that JavaScript is number one? Well, you see, JavaScript is the language of the browser, my friend. It is the language of the browser, and the browser represents the internet to most of the world. Which means that if you want to have an internet presence, you need JavaScript. That's it. That's, that's, it's that simple. That, that's all there is to it. It's not even up for debate, I'm sorry. You can hate it, you can love it, it doesn't matter. It's here to stay. And as long as it's the language of the browser, it's going to stay that way. Or, well, that's at least how I look at it. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit patronizing. I don't mean to. Mean to. It's just that I've had this argument with so many developers over the years. And at the end of the day, we come back to the same argument. You don't like it, but it's here to stay. That's usually how it ends. So, that's the number one. And the reason why it's kind of irrelevant apart from just having it as a browser thing is that Node.js is immensely popular. What else? Well, using JavaScript you can basically build everything, like almost everything. I still to this day continue saying that JavaScript is the best language for a beginner to start with. If you want to get the, if your d desire is to do the widest range of things and get started quickly. That's at least from my perspective. So, who's in second? Drum roll, Java. Java, another awesome controversial language. And as you may suspect, or rather as you may realize from what I'm saying is that, well, Stack Overflow released a few documents, well, a poll basically not that long ago, stating that JavaScript and Java are the world's most popular languages. The most amount of people are using these languages in some way or another, searching for information regarding them, etc, etc. So Java is a very natural second place to JavaScript. So you have the world's most popular programming language, followed by the world's mo second most programming language. Frederick, you're just stating obvious things here. But hear me out, I'll give you a good reason, because I think that there's more to it than, it's ju than just the fact that it's the world's second most popular programming language. And you see, the reason why Java is such a good candidate, in my personal opinion, is that it has a very close connection to enterprise level development. In other words, if you want a job as a programmer, if you want to learn basically everything that are, there is to learn about just programming in general, Java is a very, very good choice. It's a language that is, it's pretty good at everything. It's not the best at all things, but it's good enough at almost everything that it becomes the safest choice for most corporations. And corporations, guys, they are all about stability. They need to be able to work at scale, and at scale, Java really shines. 
and I know the performance discussion, we can have that. There's tons of downsides with using Java, but Java is a very good language if you want to build a really big company. It's very good at that. Not just for the co when it comes to code, because people forget that it's not always about the code, it's also about people. Java has one of the largest developer communities. It is not just the biggest language in terms of adoption in the, in the IT industry, it's also one of the most taught languages. Most people, like professional developers, know Java and feel very comfortable in Java. And it's a very simple language to pick up on average. So that's why it's on my second, in second place. So who's in third? Who's it gonna be? I'm gonna be honest with you. I had a really tough time selecting number three because it was between two different languages, at least for me. And it stood between, well, I was considering Python. And the reason why I was considering Python was because machine learning is coming strong. And Python is really good at machine learning. It has a lot of really great support for it. But the reason why I didn't pick it is because I don't think that, I, I, I honestly believe that although it's a very good choice for machine learning, I don't think that it justifies me saying that, yeah, this is a really important language and I think everybody should have a look at it. Because just having one niche thing about yourself is not good enough to get on my list. You have to bring something to the table that will fundamentally educate the person who, who goes into it. Like it, it's, it's something, it has to be bigger than just one single thing. And that's why I went with Rust. Yes. I said it, I said Rust. Rust is my number three. Let me tell you why. Rust is today probably the closest thing we have to a nice system level language. It is beautiful, guys. I have to say, like, I wasn't convinced in the beginning. I feel, I feel like I owe Rust an apology because the more I get into it, the more I love it. That's all I can say. And honestly, I think that Rust has the potential to, bring, to make system level programming cool again. I mean, it's always been cool, but at least more accessible, at least better in many, many, many ways. The pro, this language, honestly, I, I, would, I would go as far as to say that I think that we should stop teach. Uh, I'll, I think that Rust really could really make a difference in computer science education, for example. Apart from that, it uh, honestly, you will be, I, I feel that way at least. Rust is making me a better programmer. It, the, that compiler and uh, like, the language is, is beautiful. I can only, I can't say it enough. So here you have a system level programming language that will allow you to basically go like as low down as you can. So th that's why these three are so good together. JavaScript is the web language. It's going to, if you learn JavaScript well, you will learn the web or the front-end development, all of this sort of thing. Java is the poster child for enterprise level application development. In other words, if you learn Java, you will become this sort of salary programmer that you probably should be because at the end of the day, you kind of have to make some, earn, earn some money. And in Java, that's fairly easy. And then you have Rust. And Rust will simply make you a better programmer just by knowing it. Honestly, that's, that's, uh, that's all there is to it. It will allow you to basically build anything. And I'm not gonna say too much, but I would love it if Rust became more than a system level programming language because I think it has the potential to be so much more. And with WebAssembly coming up, becoming a thing, and Mozilla starting to port over most of their browser to, to Rust, I think it's going to play a big make a big difference to know it in the years to come. Have a great day.